hello I'm Shield War 100 and welcome back to my channel and uh, yes it's Hail Caesar once again I know it's been a while I did promise more games of Hail Caesar but uh, there's been a reason for the delay and uh, here it is it's a pretty good reason if you ask me I've been fancying doing Achaemenid Persians for a while and Victrix Limited have put out their various sets and uh, you know of late periodically and I've been gathering them up putting them together getting them painted but it's not an instant process especially um, for you know uh, for Ancients Gaming and Hail Caesar which uh, are not a game which you know eats up collections at a voracious rate in terms of uh, actually needing enough to put on a game and yes though so I wanted to get some Persians and I have finally done so as you no doubt have seen if you've been if you've seen my other battle reports for Hail Caesar I've got Greeks already to uh, and I've been wanting to do Persians because uh, it's such a nice that's such a nice difference in terms of the army styles and uh, hot plight wars can get a little bit dry after a while uh, yeah just uh, get in there show you roughly what's going on so yeah I've got the cavalry arm represented as well as the uh, the infantry it's not the it's, this is the core of the army I, I may well add to it as time goes on it's mostly vitrix but um, there's some first core stuff in there these uh, side chariots for example and uh, you know the odd general thrown in and who knows where I'll go in the future but yeah there you go so that's why it's been a while uh, hopefully that means I can now kind of speed up a little bit this isn't I, I doubt the collections are truly complete because they never are in wargaming <laughs> um, but uh, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm satisfied there's enough to put on game and that's what I'm going to be doing for you okay I uh, just wanted to let you know that yeah I haven't forgotten Hail Caesar it's actually very popular game reports I have on my channel so uh, yeah I, I, I'm looking forward to doing more with these in the future okay let's set the scene for today's game it's the year 479 BC and we're in Greece of course. The second uh, Persian invasion of the country is underway under King Xerxes and uh, he's, uh, he's overrun a small uh, Greek holding force at Thermopylae and um, conquered the central and northern parts of Greece. Unfortunately for him a naval victory for the Greeks at Salamis has ended his naval dominance in the in the campaign and um, pretty much crushed the Persian Navy's morale I think from what I see what it seems to have happened afterwards and um, therefore the Greeks have been able to bottle up their allied army in the Isthmus of Corinth uh, thus preventing any Persian expansion into the southern parts of the country um, which is a problem for well, Xerxes and as he's now been called back to Persia he is left by the north and uh, he has however left a very capable in the region of apparently 300,000 strong army under one of his trusted generals Mardonius and um, with the and the express intention that this army that he's left behind will conquer the remain, remaining parts of Greece and um, turn it into a new satrapy for the well for the um, resurgent Persian Empire yes that's where we are um, the we have uh, over overall the actual Greek alliance accounts for less than half of the Greek settlements as far as I'm aware of course two very powerful city-states uh, Athens and Sparta are propping up this alliance so uh, it's no small no small matter of resistance of course but uh, yeah um, what, what the, the game we're setting out for today is that um, after Salamis a, a city-state which is beyond the Isthmus of Corinth has um, declared for the alliance um, tentatively shall we say um, a small Greek cavalry force has ridden to it to establish whether it's true and to hopefully get their fort get the um, well any military forces that they can provide to join the rest of the army which obviously was not met with approval from the uh, the town at all because they didn't want to leave themselves undefended in case of J Persian reprisal so yes um, what's happened is um, the the Greek hoplite force which was sent with the cavalry and was lagging behind has caught up to the town and helped persuade them to join the alliance meanwhile a, um, a Persian force um, a task force shall we say has been sent from the main army to crush said uh, Greek little town 
state, shall we say, and um, and well, show, throw them as an example. The Persians were more than capable of using the the carrot as well as the stick, and in this case, they want to use the stick and set everything on fire with it, and uh, which is what they're about to do to Athens, as far as I'm aware. And um, yeah, that's that's where we are basically. The Persians will be moving up this road, and the Greeks will be over here to stop them. I will go into more detail in just a second, but first I'm going to just show you which um, forces on each side briefly, just to give you a rough idea, because when I set up it's going to be a little bit higgledy-piggledy and not everything's going to be starting on the board. So if I just give you a very brief overview, well, that should help you uh, just get, you know, get an idea as to what's going on. We will get into the action soon though. Okay, let's cast our eyes over the Persian task force, um, a significant force designed to, well, wipe out a, a, a sizable town and uh, be ensured that it doesn't actually put up enough resistance to make them even decent martyrs, so make them complete failures. Right, here we go. So we've got, um, I think, yeah, there's four divisions overall in this army. I'll just go through them very briefly. And uh, just to give you an idea, this is a good sample one here. It consists of four units of... Um, well, Spara Bara armed, uh, well, equipped troops, all medium infantry under one general here. All the Persian generals I'm going with a command value of eight to keep it simple for me, because my brain. And um, yeah, so yeah, so all the, these, for, the, for the most of them, you can see they've got spears in the front ranks and bows behind. That's intentional. It means that they're, and they're all medium infantry stats with the long range component added in for a, you know, for having, you know, fully equipped with archers as well. This is apparently my understanding of quite typical um, Iranian stroke Median um, you know, infantry from the time and uh, very effective as well against the vast majority of uh, enemies the Persians faced. And yeah, so um, none of the U troops in this army at all, I'll tell you now, are levy. Um, I've taken some um, you know, guidance from the official army lists for the early Achaemenid Persians, but um, I'm not making any of my army levy at all because the, um, the force that was left with Mardonius was not levy. It it was, um, you know, it was uh, it was it was the, the troops he was able to choose to do the job, and um, I don't think that having loads of I don't like this portrayal of the Persian army as vast amounts of crap. To be perfectly honest, it's uh, they controlled a massive empire with lots of stuff. You don't get that just from fielding your levy all over the place. So yeah, even back then. So there you go. Uh, yeah, so, so these are about as good as medium infantry can get. To be perfectly honest, um, they got the proper stats and also the full long range capacity. So you know, um, I'm, I'm, they're pretty sound. Obviously, in a straightforward punch up against hop hoplites of the Greek variety, they will come. They will usually come off second best. All the games I've played with these so far have borne that out. But uh, nonetheless, the range component you'll see that probably come into its own over the course of the game. So here's one of their divisions. Divisions. Um, so yeah, four units, uh, just bowmen here, and the rest are all mixed spear and bow armed. Uh, we've got the uh, an accompanying uh, slightly smaller division here. Uh, two two light skirmisher units, one with slings and one with javelins in front. Um, we're going yeah again spears in the front, archers behind. Uh, two the, the two units at the front I've got are actually armoured as well. Um, I'm using them to differentiate them from the others by saying that they're taking the immortal stuff line which gives them a re-roll on their armor save and a re-roll with their shooting as well so not much really to differentiate them they're still medium infantry they're just slightly better at it okay and uh, yeah there's, there's two units um, in the middle at the front with the sparrows there okay um, they're gonna be following on on the road uh, let's see what else we've got we've got the cavalry component all in one division under the uh, overall army commander here two units of medium cavalry is what we're going with again bow armed because because that seems to be the way. <laughs> um, these are these are the cavalry that the Greeks seem to have feared um, when it comes to you know the big standoffs at Marathon, etc., etc. Yeah, the uh, the Persian cavalry were a, a factor that the, the the Greeks knew not to ignore, and uh, we'll see how they deal with them today. Got a unit of light cavalry with javelins here, not you know just because why not you know just you know for skirmishing purposes, etc. And a unit of horse archers I made out of uh, some spare bows from the the foot archers and again the light cavalry sprues that's the glory of plastics this was quite easy and straightforward to do and quite fun okay so that's the cavalry component all sorted out and finally some greeks 
uh, because the uh, Persian army had quite a sizable contingent of Greeks. Like I said, they'd uh, already dominated the northern and central parts of Greece, but also there's the um, the Greek colonies within the Persian Empire already, so uh, which were lending their support. And apparently they weren't too um, what's the word? They weren't too reluctant to do so. <laughs> they they certainly didn't seem to mind. I'm sure there was mixed feelings throughout. I mean, just imagining it. But uh, yeah, they certainly showed up for the battles, and they don't seem to have done badly. So uh, yeah, important for them to turn up. Um, so two units of hoplite phalan phalangites and some skirmishers. They're just going to be standard hoplites um, from the you know as if they were taken from the Greek list they're not going to be elite mercenary types or anything like that or or crappy levy again just average led by a command eight leader it's just a small force which will be following up at the back of the army okay well let's just show you who's turned up for the Greek alliance and here's the Greeks right uh, let's uh, just quick pan over the combined forces of the Greek Alliance. So yes, let's uh, go down. We've got four divisions again, all together, and uh, let's go into which one's which. Uh, we'll start with the uh, the un as yet unnamed small Greek town, uh, which is uh, defying the Persian um, rulership of Greece. Or well, now they're pretty much caught. These are guys who are pretty much caught in between two larger forces now and have to sort of try and play along for their own survival. But here you go. You've got one commander, of course. Um, we're going with um, the unit at the front with the red crests, as you can see there. These are regular hoplites, the one unit, re medium sized unit, regular hoplites. The two units of hoplites behind them counting as levy because uh, this town is starting to have mixed feelings about the arrangement altogether and uh, they're not a big. Um, player by any means, and a unit of skirmisher javelin men here. Okay, so these are the guys, um, sort of like the, uh, the original forces, which were going to be trying to hold the Persians up before reinforcements turned up. We've got the Greek cavalry contingent, which isn't something you often say in this uh, <laughs> in in this in this period. But these guys were sent on to try and persuade the um, the town forces to move to join the main army, but uh, we're not successful. Unfortunately, you're going to use a little bit of imagination, kiddies, because I don't have a mounted Greek general and over. Site, I must correct, but here he is going with command value seven for him because, uh, well, he's a Greek cavalry commander, and he was uh, in my in my head cannon. This guy has been very unsuccessful in just about everything he's managed to do so far, including getting these guys to move. And uh, so there you go. Uh, he's commanding two small units of Greek medium cavalry. All the cavalry, the maximum you know sort of weight for cavalry, so to speak, I go with for this period is medium. I don't think heavy cavalry is really something you'd see until you get stirrups myself not really so yeah medium cavalry seems to fit for persians and greeks alike for the fighting cavalry and a unit of light cavalry with javelins there okay uh, that's all they've got uh, right over here we've got the troops that turned up to really bolster the alliance and um, you know try and hold the persians back we've got some uh, this, we'll start with the spartans of course including the army general at the front we're going with command value nine for him because he's spartan so why not mix it up a bit uh, two units of Spartan phalangites so the yeah the very elite Spartans that we've seen in the other game that I, I ran there they've turned up today and they're backed up each by a unit of Peltas light infantry not skirmishers but light infantry small and medium just there so yeah um, so this is quite a small but hard-hitting division Meanwhile, um, the the rest of the um, Greeks and allies are some allied um, Corinthian, perhaps, shall we say, hoplites um, and troops. Going with three units of hoplite heavy infantry there. We know what they do, the ones at the front. Um, I can dif differentiate them myself because they've got... Uh, multi-coloured plumes on their helmets so that's how I do it and I'll be able to keep track of that don't worry I'll keep you guys informed if anything happens and we've um, got a unit, small unit of peltasts again meanwhile they've got a and oh finally sorry they've got some uh, uh, some, um, some slingers as well okay yeah and that's the the Greeks I'm gonna go deploy the armies now fill you in on where we start in the game and then get into the action it's gonna be fun Okay, as the uh, Persian army makes its way down the road towards 
the Greek town, um, they all of a sudden are brought up short as uh, the enemy sighted call goes up and a blocking, small blocking force of Greek hoplites presents itself. No doubt the town's defenders trying to occupy a, uh, well it's a familiar thing for the Persians by now, Greek defending hoplites occupying a, um, was a choke point along the road flanked by the woods to hopefully give them some uh, flank cover. Uh, the Persians for their part have uh, their, their leading division this one here has started to, to form out into its uh, battle formations before entering full on bow range and uh, so there you go you can see them there doing in the process of doing that the Persian cavalry has been dispersed around to give up give support and a unit of light cavalry has been sent forward just to probe the situation shower them with some javelins and see how their resolve truly is unfortunately at doing this the alarm grows up in well much more concern than before as uh, more Greek hoplites emerge from the forests on either side, the Persians having fallen into the trap which was laid by the Greeks as the Spartan division here and the allied Corinthian perhaps division over here starts emerging from the trees into battle formations now all of a sudden uh, this is turning into much more of a battle that the, that the Persians anticipated but they still have a lot of forces in the area albeit moving up the road so as you can see you've got the, the there's the lead Persian division actually currently forming battle lines um, the, the, the one behind with the slightly better um, Persian infantry behind uh, uh, coming up behind it in column and uh, finally the Greek allies here well the Greek Persian allies shall we say um, at the very back um, at Shea Shield Wall didn't quite have enough <laughs> uh, space along the road but just imagine these ones following up there they'll be deployed onto the board as space allows and yeah the uh, the Greeks emerging from the woods uh, heavy infantry have to reorder themselves having got out of it but it might be uh, sufficient to give them the edge it's gonna this battle is gonna come down to which side can form their uh, battle lines best and quickest and uh, get in and, uh, and see who can do what to the other first shall we say uh, right well that's that um, I'm gonna move into turn one now uh, I'm gonna dice off to see who actually gets initiative in this particular situation I reckon it could go to either side so I'm just gonna straight dice for it I'm not gonna scenario it to one side or the other and yeah we'll get you get stuck in and uh, start moving some troops see you in just a moment turn one went to the Greeks for initiative uh, they railed highest so they elected to go first and it was a pretty intriguing t uh, command phase is what we just had and uh, yes uh, not much initiative moves just those skirmishes there moved up to where to, so they could get into pelting range of the Persian light cavalry but it became a bit redundant after all that uh, but some very impressive command rolls followed um, the hoplites needing to um, first of all move out of the wood then spend an order to form into battle line and um, before they could do anything else but nonetheless three activations um, granted by a very impressive role here by on this uh, on the on the Greek left wing uh, all these hoplites including the um, elite ones at the front there forming up into battle line and getting an additional move afterwards uh, getting their full three moves also allowed their light troops and their skirmishers to move up as well um, in front so yeah pretty good uh, the central blocking force um, only managed the one move which is still pretty good yeah it's not too bad uh, just to move forwards up the road a little bit leaving one of their units behind to truly just block that little uh, choke point as well and uh, the Spartans for their part had to split their orders a little bit because of the presence of the light cavalry um, the the unit of hoplites which was facing them uh, actually got three orders and managed to move out of the woods uh, form up and then charge um, to which the uh, light cavalry managed to evade quite adeptly uh, no no real danger to them really I guess um, but uh, yes they they got funded they got thumped back a, a fair bit for their troubles and uh, yeah so the, the Spartans here are fully formed up these Spartans however only managed one order so they moved out of the woods they still haven't formed up they're still in uh, open order shall we say but they got their light troops backing them up behind okay uh, right that's it for the Greek first command phase gonna do a little bit of shooting and I'll just uh, let you know what came back it'll only take a minute 
Greek, a uh, little bit of Greek shooting now finished for the combat phase, and uh, yeah, it was just there's not much to report really. The uh, peltas here and the sling is opened up on the uh, the the Persian horse archers. Did a hit apiece, which weren't saved, but didn't result in any break tests or anything. So just a couple of hits carried on this small unit. They got stamina of four, so you know they're not going anywhere just yet. Um, right, that's and that's all there really is. There's not an awful lot of shooting or. Um, you know, long-range weaponry in this uh, in this Greek um, army, as is historically accurate. Um, what I did do then is finish off the turn. What I'm doing is, uh, for the purposes of the Greek cavalry, which you, the astute amongst you will notice isn't on the board, they've been sent home, but their, their, their commander's decided he's going to turn around and arrive at the battle because he's uh, hot-headed and doesn't want to be told what to do. What I'm doing is I'm keeping a, I'm rolling a die at the end of the Greek t each a Greek turn. Uh, they rolled a four this time, and I'm keeping a running total of that when this reaches 10 so every successive turn they'll add another d6 worth of score to this and once it reaches 10 the turn after that the greek cavalry will arrive on the board just over there where the trees end okay and uh, that's uh, be a little bit more a little bit of unpredictability for the game but for now i'm going to move on to the persian turn one they've really got to sort themselves into some sort of battle order quickly because the, I played through this game before with someone else and the Greeks took a little bit longer to get into battle formation than they did this time so and uh, it didn't go well for the Persians that time so the Persians really do need to put get their uh, their fingers out and uh, yes uh, start start uh, getting battle ready uh, in short order now this could be a much shorter game than before Persian turn one, uh, the command phase, etc., complete now, and uh, yeah, it's not. It's been a bit of a mixed bag for them. Uh, in the middle, uh, with a mixture of initiative and some good ordering, they form the, the um, orange and blue division, as I have to call them, have formed about as compact a defensive formation as they could get under the circumstances. So yeah, they've they're, they've got their medium infantry backing each other up and ready to dish out some uh, shooting in just a second. Unfortunately for the Persians, the cavalry division failed its first order, so uh, no movement for them. Um, the horse archers did manage to withdraw from over here backwards a bit, which unfortunately then progressed to uh, sort of interrupt the uh, manoeuvres of the uh, other infantry division behind, who passed their orders in, with flying colours, three orders across the board, and uh, formed into a battle line just behind the leading division, uh, almost, just this other unit following up behind. They got their skirmishers into position though, so uh, not too bad. And yes, they're hoping, they'll have to hope that the Greeks uh, don't manage to push home a, a determined attack soon, otherwise they're going to get possibly caught short, um, which has happened in a couple of the previous games I've played with this, uh, with the Persians versus the Greeks, so uh, yeah, hoping that doesn't happen again. Ooh. And finally, just the Greeks move, the Greek um, Persian allies, Moving up the road only past a singular order, so um, even though they're in march column, they uh, yeah, they're, unfortunately they're just this kind of lagging a little bit. But uh, progress has nonetheless been made, and maybe getting a massive amount of orders and adding to the traffic jam up front might have been counterproductive at this stage. They can still see how the battle progresses and see where they need it later on. Okay, uh, just going to do some Persian shooting, which uh, will involve more, much more dice rolling at least, even if not results, than the Greeks. Well, it's, uh, it certainly was an effective round of shooting considering the circumstances for the Persians. There weren't actually that many units able to give um, any punishment out, but the ones that did, well, there's been some good dice rolls, let's put it that way. Uh, the combined weight of fire of these uh, Persian slingers and the horse archers here caused the... Uh, the Peltasts on the extreme left Greek flank to uh, not only take a hit but also have to withdraw disordered. So uh, that's them stuck for a turn. The fire, fire well, the, the arrows from this middle division also did some telling damage. Uh, this Greek phalanx, the elite actually Greek phalanx here, took two damage and also retreated disordered from a volley. Uh, some pretty pitiful break test rolls for them. Uh, they were just quite fortunate they didn't disorder the unit behind them as well. And uh, finally the 
The Persian archers here caused a singular hit on the Greek skirmishers to the front of their central division as well. So, uh, yeah, that's 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 it. All nothing else has moved quite into range. Certainly not the Spartans just yet. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, that might have bought the Persians enough time to form into a decent battle line and uh, maybe maybe give some uh, resistance to the Greeks as and when the time the clash comes. They'll be hoping to be able to wear them down a little bit more than this, though. Hmm. A fairly tepid Greek uh, activation, uh, as you'll see. Haven't made them the great strides that they really wanted to <laughs> overall, but uh, some progress nonetheless. Uh, okay, we'll start over here. Uh, the Greek, the elite Greek phalanx had a chance to shake off their disorder before the turn started, but failed to do so. That's what we uh, pay those points for. And uh, yeah, but the rest of their division caught in between getting into grips and also waiting to hold up. They got two of their five units held back this turn so that's where they don't want to get too fragmented so they consoled themselves with getting their remaining two ordinary phalanx units into uh, into battle into like a, a, a support a mutually supporting line of battle and getting their skirmishes in front hopefully to soak up as much damage but for so the hoplites are as unmolested as possible moving to the center uh, the commander tried to order with an you know an ambitious role to get his uh, his front two units to charge home into the well the orange unit of Persians here and uh, got two out of three orders wasn't quite enough to get that last um, that last lurch into combat so uh, they've ended up just a little bit short but nonetheless a lot further up the pitch than they started he then unfortunately fouled his second order to move the skirmishes and so yes another Greek division is leave is left a little bit strung out and uh, maybe that's not for the best of their plan but uh, they just need to get some hoplites into combat I've seen how these I've seen how this goes once that starts to happen the Persians ramp start to have uh, cohesion problems themselves to say the least uh, the Spartans then uh, had a pretty abysmal turn uh, first of all the command value 9 general just to try to just bring these guys into order and move them up and he rolled a 10 and uh, failed it was only thanks to the fact that these Spartans are drilled that they managed to form battle line at all so uh, that's it for the Spartans no actual physical movement done okay it's gonna be a little bit of uh, Greek yeah um, well shooting combat shall we say and I'll just report on that in a second yeah, well, all there really was was this unit of uh, skirmishing slingers here, and they missed when they were aiming to shoot, well, um, to well, to loose, shall we say, at the uh, Persian javelin, and they've got opposite them, and they, yeah, they just missed both their shots. So that's it. Uh, yes, yeah, the the Greek phalanx doesn't actually have any short range, even short range shooting values, no javelins or anything. They're too tightly knit. So uh, yeah, there, there was no nothing from the Greek battle line at all, and everyone else was too far away. So uh, yeah. That actually concluded the Greek activate well the Greek fighting for this turn. Uh, they removed the um, disorder from their affected units, and yes, it's time for C Greek buttock cheeks to clench tight as the Persians move into even well as the Persian weight of arrows would, will descend upon them next turn, and they're going to have to hope that they can withstand it. And uh, yeah, we'll see how that's going to affect their overall battle plan in just a second. Well, mistakes into miracles, and well, or just mistakes, I don't know. Um, bit of a confusing turn for the Persians. <laughs> um, yes, well, first of all, starting with initiative, uh, the central block of, uh, un un uh, block of troops has moved backwards on initiative, away from the Greeks, just a little bit to make it so there can't be initiative charged next turn. That's, uh, that's useful. The skirmish javelinmen charged in, you know, on initiative charged into the, um, the, the skirmishes opposite them, just to clear them away. Way and the Greeks evaded behind their lines, fair enough. Um, then orders started to happen in terms of uh, you know, actual dicing for them and the cavalry uh, failed to act once again. I get the feeling that most of the, the both sides have got quite a healthy respect for each other, the Greeks not liking Persian cavalry and the, the Persians having mixed feelings about facing off against Spartans as well, so both sides being a bit hesitant to get to grips with each other. Um, at this stage, um, fortunately <laughs> for the battle at large, but uh, good for them, I guess. Good for them. Um, the well, the, unfortunately, this commander then tried to order his his units, his bat, his, his line units to to form up to help out the uh, the forward division and he blundered on a double six and they just decided to take that as an order to move backwards one move which they have done uh, they're still facing the enemy they're not routing or anything but uh, yeah not great not great um, 
<laughs> so yes, they, they've uh, obviously misunderstood something quite drastically and it might cause, cost the Persians dear. Uh, finally, the Greeks up the road, um, well, the Greek allies for the Persians, shall I say, because yeah, that could get confusing if I don't keep on top of it. Uh, they just wanted to order to go up the road a little bit because they're still not 100% certain where they're needed and they only pass one order anyway, so they're all on the board now and uh, snaking up the road, uh, possibly wondering what all the fuss is about up ahead, probably hearing reports filled back of uh, heavier resistance than they were anticipating and yeah um, probably getting ready to well can't pull their weight a little bit as well okay we're going to go to the persian fire shoot yeah firing i say firing that's something that really only should be a term only should be used when it comes to guns but <laughs> instinct makes me use it for war gaming the persian shooting phase we'll go to next and uh, yeah i'll uh, report back on what progress they make this time and as feared, the uh, fairly disjointed Persian command phase resulting in their fairly broken up order of battle has now resulted in a downturn in their shooting effectiveness. No Greek units being sent disordered this time. Um, the slingers down here failed to achieve anything at all and uh, just combined the two archer you well, the archers in the two units at the front here managed to do two hits and force a, a, a break test upon these Greeks at the front here um, from the central Greek division but uh, it was not sufficient well the, the, they, the break test was easily passed and uh, no lasting effects were done to them just the two hits okay and the cavalry for the Persians are still out of range with the bows that they do have so uh, yeah that's uh, that's that for this activation this turn we're gonna go to the Greek turn three and uh, yeah they're gonna keep trying apply some pressure the Greeks uh, are starting to get their act together now, uh, well and truly, as their line didn't quite make contact with the Persians yet, as you can see, but they were all sort of lurching into place. Uh, the Spartans particularly managed to move up a cut, uh, well, once or three times, depending on which unit you're talking about. And uh, yeah, they, it seems that they're getting over their uh, sudden like hesitancy to approach the Persian cavalry. Um, over here, the, um, the Greeks moved up one initiative just to force back the uh, Persian skirmisher line and they put their slingers back through in front again and uh, the only thing that didn't really work out is the fact that their elite phalanx is lagging so far behind uh, failed the order but because it's drilled managed to move one forwards anyway um, thank goodness it was drilled otherwise wouldn't even have got that right but yeah uh, tried to make contact in the center but was one um, Pip on the dice short of being able to do so, so uh, not quite there yet, have to weather another turn of fire at least to get in. And uh, yeah, we're going to be moving to the uh, Greek um, combat phase now, well, Greek, the shooting phase now. Uh, there's a bit of shooting going on various places and I'll uh, recount in a moment. Okay, a bunch of javelins have been thrown various places, no less, no, uh, no disorder, no disruption caused to the Persian forces a few hits uh, blossoming here and there on this like cavalry unit the archer unit in, at the front here and some skirmishes back there but really nothing else to recount unfortunately for the Greeks um, the Greek cavalry has now reached a grand total of six on its uh, tracked total uh, needs to get to 10 don't forget before it'll arrive so uh, no 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 quick sign could be some time or it could be really soon before we see them who knows but uh, best for the Greeks not to really rely on their own cavalry not when they've got hoplites around so back to the Persians the Persians have uh, sprung a little bit and uh, yes uh, so they've met this uh, division over here in its command phase managed to has managed to reorder itself it's pulled its skirmishes back behind the lines to give some rear support to this unit ordered out the uh, the units in column into some sort of uh, supporting line as well it's ready to open up on the uh, on the approaching Greeks here the Persian slingers have retreated into the forest so get some protection with themselves so yeah this this division is actually making some sort of uh, stand now finally uh, the ones in the middle are just bracing for impact you see they're going to be uh, hoping that their missile fire at the last minute does some telling damage to any approaching Greeks the Greeks behind now forming into battle lines uh, one unit behind the other ready to move where needed the Persian cavalry acted on initiative to force away some Greek skirmishes so uh, cutting down on the support options available for the Greeks when they go in um, these Persians over here these cavalry these medium cavalry could have 
have charged into the Spartans on initiative but elected not to do so, they can block the Spartans far more effectively, daring the Spartans to charge them. It's not something that happens very often in Hail Caesar, ch infantry charging cavalry, but it is possible, but it does often result in um, bad times for the infantry. But uh, these are Spartans, so I guess we'll find out maybe in the next turn. Uh, yes, because uh, the the Spartan, the uh, Persian light cavalry evaded back behind their lines, and the uh, the Spartan general finally passed an order in order to get his horse archers regrouping behind, um, well, over here onto his side of the board. Okay, so uh, things very much developing. We've got another hail of arrows coming down now, and we'll see what happens to the Greeks. Okay, yes, more hits blossoming up and down the Greek lines. Telling me the skirmishers took a pounding from the. Uh, well, the immortal stat-lined um, Persians here, so, you know, I was guess it was on the cards for them. But, uh, yeah, another third hit on this lead unit of Hoplites, but crucially, no um, disorder anywhere along the line, so all these Greek units will be able to move in their next turn, so I predict some uh, crunchy melee. <laughs> well, uh, let's get to it, so it's the, the Greeks' next turn now, okay? Yes, the uh, it's crunching time, everyone. So uh, the Greeks activated, and on an initiative, a lot of initiative moves happen this turn. Uh, these guys crunched into the front rank line of uh, Persian infantry. These Greeks are carrying three hits, so they're halfway towards their uh, stamina limit. But being in combat's better than not for them by every measure. So uh, in they go. Uh, the Greeks on the far side from where we are uh, just opted to move forwards on initiative once they're trusting their skirmish screen to protect them from the uh, hail of arrows again they would have needed two orders to get in and just didn't really I thought they might just want to keep pushing back the versions you know slowly anyway give them a chance for their uh, elites to catch up which they did not really because <laughs> they keep failing their orders but the drilled ability is coming cashing in chips for them I tell you uh, the peltas of chasing the the uh, skirmish slingers towards the, into the woods so they moved up they'll be able to javelin them in a moment so there's that uh, let's have a look we've got uh, over here oh yes of course the Spartans on initiative did charge the Persian cavalry in this most unphotogenic combat that I've had the pleasure of setting up for you uh, yeah it's it, it's an interesting one the, the per Spartans are me to automatically go disordered uh, I need to roll in this actually I roll right now do on a th one two or three the Spartan ca uh, the Persian cavalry go disorder because they're counter charging uh, long spear armed troops so here we go that's a two so yes these uh, both sides are disordered Hoorah, hoorah. Um, so that that'll be a, that, that this should make for an interesting combat. Um, over here, the same thing again. I've, uh, so uh, the Spartans are disordered. I'll mark them accordingly on a one, two, or three. These cavalry are. Oh dear, they also are disordered. Uh, that's not that's not good for the Persians. I was kind of counting on them staying in good formation. Oh well, never mind. Ra ra ra. Both sides being disordered will will mean for a bit of a messy combat in a moment, but uh, we'll get there in a bit. And uh, yeah, um, otherwise there's some tidying up moves. You know, put skirmishes moving up and uh, whatnot. We're going to get on with a little bit of shooting and some uh, close combat, and I will tell you what happens when. Well, okay, a uh, little bit one-sided, unfortunately. The uh, right, first of all, the javelins and the pearl tasks force back the uh, slingers' disorder. That was a taste of things to come. All right, uh, the crunchy combat in the middle with the phalangites versus the Persians ended in a decisive defeat for the Persians. Only the fact that they were one point off going shaken stopped them from routing altogether, and that would have been really terrible. Uh, but it pushed back the entire brigade, pretty much uh, whole division. Sorry all disordered as well um, the, the Greek, they managed to inflict a solitary damage point onto the Greeks who uh, are obviously carrying on their the combat and the pursuit and then just to uh, really rub everything in the, the Spartans fought against the cavalry and you'll notice there's a disturbing absence of cavalry now uh, yes the Spartans despite being disordered despite uh, fighting having to charge cavalry they 
yeah, they spartaned it, shall we say, and they ripped apart the Persian cavalry in a whole bunch of awful dice rolling. The Persian, the Spartan general got involved as well, which was enough to tip the balance in that combat. And yeah, the um, well, it was just rotten. It really was for the for the Persians, and that has well and truly broken the uh, Persian cavalry division. So they'll be retreating back off the board. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. That's not what I was expecting or necessarily hoping for or whatever because uh, yeah these 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 Persian cavalry don't they're not cheap <laughs> and I spent a long time painting them and uh, yes thanks guys you've uh, you've really done me proud today thanks um, I thought they might at least do some damage to the Spartans but the dice rolls every single die um, was a you know was a pass for the Spartans. I didn't even need to use their stubborn rule, so uh, yeah, that was uh, oof, it was nasty. And uh, yeah, the uh, the Spartans have elected not to like pursue on or anything. They're both disordered, so they're just going to maintain sitting there just to uh, yeah just to just to gather their breath before pushing on and probably crunching through some more Persians. Okay, so where does this game stand at the moment? Well, the Persians are currently backed nastily into a, into a decreasing corner and, and be, that, that involves them uh, probably having to engage the Greeks on, a, un, on an unfavourable frontal assault basis which is what they really want, didn't want. Ideally what you want to do for the Persians is to be able to punch a hole somewhere and get your cavalry behind the Greeks and it just didn't happen. They were forced into a frontal assault on Spartans. Probably the best, worst matchup they could have gone for. Really, you know, um, I, it's my fault. I'm, I'm set up the game, so it is my fault. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, the Persians' dice rolling hasn't been great either. To be honest, they should have done it. They should have, even if they got pushed back or destroyed or whatever, they should have at least have done some telling damage. It just hasn't been the case. But uh, let's see if they can salvage something. They still got some fight in them. There's some Greeks uh, mercenaries. Well, there's some Greek subjects of their own behind them, and uh, yeah, still got the immortals here as well. And uh, we'll see what they can do. It's the Persians go. See if they can retaliate. Well, not much to recount really during the Persian turn. A lot of their troops stayed static, either locked in combat or bracing for the inevitable and readying their bows. Yes, so this unit here is going to give out the goods again to these skirmishers probably, hopefully to clear them off before the combat begins. And um, the, yes, these guys here, the their general has joined the unit in combat just to hopefully, well, got nothing better to do, might as well get killed by Greeks. <laughs> um, the Persian cavalry just pulled back, their division's broken so they'll be just getting out of the way at this point in time. Uh, the Greek uh, allies actually managed to um, get a good order off and they've swung around hurrah they get to deal with the Spartans now probably that will cheer them up I'm sure mm, yes <laughs> so there we go um, that's that's it for the command phase for the Persians we'll uh, let's tell you what happens find out where the uh, bumping and grinding and the shooting of arrows goes on some respite for the Persians, but the cost of lives. Um, right, so they uh, basically, yes, the, per the Immortals managed to shoot into pieces the skirmishers in front of them. So yes, uh, it was a lot of it was a lot of shots. It, it sent them shaken, and they got picked up. It wasn't a very good break test roll for the Greek slingers, but they did their job. Uh, moving into the middle, the the the, the, the carnage continued. The um, the Greeks won the combat, but they went shaken. As you can see, there's their six points of damage there. Um, so they couldn't pursue the withdrawing Persians, who got beaten again. Uh, even their general got killed, so he'll be being put back onto the board as a reserve commander uh, which is one fewer um, command value so uh, yeah that makes this this division a bit harder to, to, to move around um, yes every single Persian unit got forced back and they're all disordered at this point as well so uh, yeah that's not good but they have opened up some breathing space between them and the rampaging Greeks the Greeks for their part fell back behind their supporting units and in a decent display of dice rolling neither no one went disordered from that so uh, yes pretty professional looking thing even from the levy phalanx behind pretty good okay uh, this that concludes this activate this uh, Persian activation we're gonna go back to the Greeks now and see if they can uh, yeah, continue to pile on the pressure. This is what we like to see in our Ancients gaming, battle lines locked and uh, yes getting to that stage now um, 
the Greeks have had a pretty good um, run. <laughs> yeah, the, the this the, the sorry the far division over here um, was able to use its initiative to move into combat with the elite. Um, Persian infantry force uh, taking a little tiny bit of damage of one point on the far end there to their uh, for closing fire before they uh, got in. It mean the Persians need to well, with three dice need to roll two sixes to force a, uh, a break test on the charging Greeks due to the Greeks' heavy infantry status and the fact that they're closing shots. So it's very difficult to stop charging hoplites, and uh, that's what the Persians are finding out definitely. Uh, Unfortunately, the middle division didn't fare so well. They're a bit tired now. Um, the, uh, in just trying to adjust the skirmishes, the commander blundered, so they moved up the pitch as opposed to sideways to cover their uh, their uh, recovering ally, their recovering kinsmen, shall we say, uh, which meant that the commander couldn't move to take a point of damage off of the uh, the regular hoplite unit in his division either. So uh, they're kind of stuck there, but uh, they've they've done some work and. Uh, yeah, time to let the uh, professionals do their job. And speaking of professionals, the Spartans down here, they passed three orders to charge into the newly emerged unit of Greeks, uh, well, enemy Greeks that hove into view, something, something, traitors, blah, blah, blah. And uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting um, because, uh, yes, they've got both sides have got their supports in contact. Um, and uh, we'll see how well, how, let's see how well that Spartan. Um, like high, post Thermopylae high, shall we say, and uh, we'll we'll, uh, we'll we'll carry them. Okay, uh, the other unit also passed three orders to get right up in the grill of the uh, fairly harassed feeling <laughs> Persian central uh, division here as well. Um, they're saying, "Oh, good, per Spartans now." Whatever next today. Hmm. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's really closed the distance. The Spartans are really trying to prove that they are indeed worthy of their pole pole position in Greece that they're going to want to have after this is all over. Okay. Uh, well, that's that. We've got a lot of combats to to resolve. I'm going to get on with them and uh, tell you what happens. It's going to be another messy one. I got the feeling. Okay, the Persians are starting to have less and less room to fall back into. Um, at the far end from where I am, on the Greek left, the uh, the unit of Phalangites managed to get a three nil victory by hunkering down behind their heavy, behind their broad shields, and uh, yes, just smashing the Persians in. Despite the benefits of uh, the rear support and the Persian commander getting stuck in, um, they managed to win by three, but just pushed the Immortals back in good order. So uh, nothing too drastic going on there. But yes, nonetheless, being pushed back again, the Persians are. On this side, quite different. Um, the Persians actually won the combat by one point, causing three points of damage to two taken. And uh, what that means is that... Uh, oh, they want on a total of three, not two. Just let me mark that up. There we go. Sorry about that. Uh, yoink. <sighs> right. The um, per Yeah, so despite uh, everything... The Greeks lost the combat by one because they have the phalanx rule that counts as a draw, so combat just continues on for future turns. Yeah, so uh, that's the thing with the, you've got to beat the phalangites by a hefty margin in order to uh, in order to get them. Oh well, but. Uh, yeah, the Persians will take any result at this point, so... <laughs> okay, and then on to the, uh, well, the main event, shall we say. Right, yeah, so it was great. The Spartans thundered into their um, opposite numbers in the Persian lines, and um, the Persian allied Greeks, for their part, um, decided to hunker behind their shields to get that plus one on the armor save at the cost of minus one to hit. Their general had joined them, because he was in front and had to join a unit so yeah and they had rear support so you know it was a it was a tough prospect for the Spartans and the Spartans went in caused like six hits they had the support of their general they, well seven hits I think it was but every single one was saved by the um, by the Persian backed hoplites the um, the return damage with the all the supports etc got one hit through after the Spartan stubbornness so uh, the Spartans technically lost the combat by one um, I like to think that the Spartans and the um, enemy generals met in single combat and interestingly the Spartan general has been wounded so he's unable to allocate any extra attacks to the co any combats this game that's nasty for him so yes he he got beaten and uh, he's paying to lick his wounds you know been pulled back through the ranks and uh, yeah so the Spartans lost the combat by one overall maybe two either way it's not enough to um, cause them to take a break test either because they have the phalanx 
Dragons rule, of course, as well. Okay, so yes, we're settling in for a nice combat here. But uh, yeah, game is really closing in on all sides. It's uh, it's just down to who's going to outlast the other now. Okay, yeah, uh, right, and uh, yes, that's it. I think we're going to move back to the Persians. Right, it continues. The uh, Persian position gets ever more precarious, I think. Uh, yeah, unfortunately. Uh, right, combat. There was a bit of shooting, but nothing too much to report. The uh, Peltas and the Woods didn't take any damage from the slings. The uh, Spartans took one point of damage, but it wasn't enough to worry them overly, unfortunately. Everything else was tied up in supporting other existing combats, etc. So, uh, yeah. Um, going for this, the uh, this unit of, of Persians managed to um, force another draw with the Greek phalanx in the middle, who went shaking. Uh, having gone shaken because it was a draw, they had to take a, uh, a test, uh, a break test, and they withdrew in good order. So uh, not too bad, but again, we forced the sides apart. Unfortunately for the Persians over here, the combat that was up here, the um, the phalanx um, just hunkered down behind the shields again, took one point of damage, did enough to um, win the combat by three, which destroyed the. Um, the Persian unit they were facing, routed the unit of skirmishers that was behind them and wounded the um, Persian general in charge of the division into the bargain who has uh, run off over here to join this unit and the, the Greeks have reformed and uh, about faced, Ew, not good time for that to happen on the far end between the Spartans and the Greeks uh, this time the Spartans managed to pull off a victory um, they didn't, uh, they took no damage and they caused two points of their own, meaning that they won the combat by two but uh, unfortunately that again phalanx needs to be beaten by more than two in order to take a break test so it was another draw so uh, this combat nicely uh, chugging away <laughs> and uh, could be settling in for a, a lengthy battle as as hoplite warfare can be right uh, right that's that I think we'll uh, move back now to the Greeks it's uh, looking like her just time to close in and time may well be running out for the Persians now as uh, well during the initiative phase and the command you know the actual orders phase of the Greek turn lots of things were passed and lots of uh, charges hit home the, uh, the the other the Spartan unit here took one point of damage and a break test from charging it home on these uh, Persians here but it was not enough to deter them they easily managed to slam home in good order against the Persians with um, support from their peltasts behind the um, the guys the middle the central unit unfortunately just failed to get in by one pip on the dice but they're ready to go next turn the um, the f the Shaken unit withdrew behind the elite phalanx who then passed a lot of orders three orders to get straight back into the damaged battered heavily battered immortals and the unit that had about faced having finished off its opponents as wheel has gone round and hit the uh, remaining the, the supporting Persian in the side so this really is looking like uh, ooh, time is running out for the Persians now it's just not been their day uh, but let's get to the combat phase see if uh, any any surprises can come out of the bag well, no surprises, unfortunately, this time. So, and yes, uh, the, the combats uh, went horrifically against the Persians once again, all by the um, hoplite scrum on, on the on the Persian left here, in which it was yet another draw. Uh, neither side able to get enough of an upper hand to actually t push the balance against their opponents. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, just horrible. <laughs> the Spartans here wiped out the unit in front of them, pushing back the others behind, um, and the supporting unit to to their side as well. The and the the um, or allies, the Corinthian allies, managed to envelop and destroy the Persian uh, division facing them, and both sides lost their leaders in the such ferocious fighting. But uh, yes, this game really has been a uh, a chilling. Um, reminder of how powerful heavy infantry are against um, enemies that aren't ready for them and yeah I think I paid the price there um, yes the so a resoundingly crushing victory for the Greeks this time I can't see them uh, 
having any uh, any other conclusion drawn from this. Funnily enough, just at this moment in time, at the end of the Greek turn, their cavalry would suddenly arrive from the side, but uh, don't really need them now, I guess. I guess uh, they'll they'll see what's happened and quietly slope off before anyone notices, so as not to have their insubordination reported at all. Uh, but yeah, um, it weren't necessary this time. I've actually played this exact same set up with the exact same forces before and it was a lot closer than this but um, obviously when I'm filming that's when all the dice rolls decide to go one way or the other and today they went for the Greeks they definitely did um, yeah can't odds that but I very much enjoyed the game it's great to have my little models pushing around the board and uh, you know doing their thing it's, it's it's a good fear sense of achievement and I hope you enjoyed the spectacle it's uh, yeah let's just go back in on that Hot flight scrum again. Yeah, that's what it's all about. That's what I like to see. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the game overall. Hell Seas is a really good one. You can do these um, little smaller sort of style engagements. You know, that was like a semi ambush, that was. But um, it's not the sort of thing you can easily set up with other rule sets, not really. In my, exp in my um, experience, those ones are rather too uh, focused on the stand-up set-up set-piece battles, which is fine, and I have many, many enjoyable games I've about other, other systems, but for video purposes, Hail Caesar, I think, is where it's at. Um, yeah, I, I will be getting these models back out on the board, and I dare say there will be additions to both sides over the course of time. I, want, I really want some Thracians to add into this mix, you know, for one side or the other. And, uh, yeah, it would be good to to um, see the Persian cavalry have a bit more room to breeze around in and you know, really stretch their legs, might get some better use out of them. And on another day, the Persian shooting would have disrupted the Greeks a lot more. It's one thing stopping um, two like support, you know, a, a phalanx of Greek hoplite supported to the rear and to the side. It's a whole other thing when you can shoot them down. So it's just one unit going in on your fully supported ranks of uh, immortals. You know, I know that. Uh, but you know, nonetheless, this gives me a chance to sort of try out the rules. You know, uh, moving model, moving um, forces up and stuff. But I dare say, in my next battle, it'll be much more of a straightforward set piece affair. And uh, hopefully, you'll join me to enjoy that one as well. I'm Shield War 100. I uh, hope you enjoyed looking at this game. Any uh, hints and tips you can come up with, uh, yeah, please let me know. And uh, yes, I'll see you next time. Thank you very much and goodbye.